hi and welcome to today's video about capturing the windows process exit code and some other useful information since you are watching this video i assume that you have some understanding of how windows processes are created and we interact with it programmatically via c sharp but for the sake of completeness and for uh, everybody who might be new to this let's go over some uh, basic things about process and then we'll go to the capturing exit information about it So we'll jump into Visual Studio and uh, see it in action. So here I have a simple console application, um, but this doesn't have to be. It can be any .NET application, um, either desktop application, WPF, WinForm, services, or anything. Essentially, uh, what we use is uh, the system.diagnostics namespace, which has a class called this process. So let's instantiate a new process here. Uh, you can see that this diagnostics names is already added. If you don't have, uh, you might need to add that. Uh, when you create an instance, the way you tell what is to be run under this process is by giving it something called as start information. Now in the start info, you have this file name, which should point to an executable. For simplicity, let's try to run notepad here because it will be able to find that and uh, the way usually process we launch a process is by doing process dot start right so this is the bare minimum basic skeleton for launching a process but you would want to add more information to this and uh, be able to hook up event handlers to the process various events for that first we have to enable uh, raising events flag for this process so if this is not set then you will not get any uh, you know event handle notifications um, once this is done you want to subscribe to that event handler and ha it has to be done before the process starts obviously right so we'll do p dot exited now exited is this event handler as you can see it occurs when a process exits right so we'll just add a method here which will be run on the exit of the process uh, we'll go come back with method later um so once this starts we don't want the main method to exit so let's let's ask it to wait by adding a console.readline read line right now here we want to log some information when we are here so ideally uh, we want to look at the exit code generally right that is the necessary information you should look for so I've added that and how do we get hold of the object the process object right so in this event handler when it gets called the sender basically is nothing but the process object so what we have to do is we have to cast it as process so that you can access uh, all its properties now there you go so with this much setup let's run this you would see that it will launch a notepad new notepad process like it did exactly and once this process ends by whichever mechanism either its own process i mean the executable code crashes some application exception uh, you kill via test task manager or you just simply kill it you see that our uh, process exited event handle has been called and we see the process id this exit with code zero so this usually stands for success right so this is the exited event handle which we are talking about along with this uh, exit exited event of the process there is uh, a couple of more uh, properties or methods which are quite frequently used which I want to add here so it's how we wait for the process to exit so for example we'll go back to Visual Studio and uh, here let's say first we'll add a line here 
uh, to indicate the uh, end of program for example right so if there is nothing else uh, which is happening it will come here and uh, we'll see the end of program so if you run here right now you'll see that it all it immediately reaches the end of program right because there's nothing else which is stopping it to go further what if you want to wait for this process to exit right so one way to do that is uh, there is a property called as has exited on a process object which will tell you if this process is running or it has already exited so you can just uh, have a loop here and uh, wait half a second to check back again and this will work as you'll see it will just keep on looping and once this ends first the event handle gets called and then we reach the end of the program but this polling is not necessary for all the scenarios if there is some meaningful thing which you want to do here or polling is really fitting in your scenario you can do that otherwise there is a very handy method on the process object called as wait for exit this line will hold the main thread until the process has exited so let's validate in this case uh, we still should should see the same result uh, except we don't have the poll right? so you see we didn't reach the main end of the program and after it's the process ended we have the event handle called and then we reach the end and there is small override in this case we can also give it some timeout let's say we don't want to wait more than three seconds so it's it's basically a millisecond so i'll say three thousand if it doesn't exit within three seconds i'll still go ahead Right, so run it let's run it to validate see one two three so the main program has gone further and uh, exited while our main process is still running right now if i kill it you see the exit event that's all for today's video uh, in future videos probably we can uh, go in more methods and properties you have on process object which is our task uh, when we interact with the process we have launched from our applications so thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next one